Hello and welcome to my review of the Warlord Titan Macro Gatling Blaster. One of these will set you back £92. I know, that's uh, almost more than most miniatures. And this is just a single weapon. But it is for the most expensive uh, and one of the largest resin models out there that Forge World produce. And your eyes are not deceiving you. This weapon does exist. Contrary to the writers of uh, Warhammer 40,000 Imperial Armour Compendium book, they completely missed uh, adding it into that book. However, uh, they have brought out an FAQ since with all of its rules. And it's pretty good. I purchased one before that debacle and um, just because of the rule of cool. Looks amazing. Um, one of my favourite weapons is these long multi-barreled cannons uh, that Titans can have. Both the Reaver Titan one looks fantastic and I, I recently purchased the updated version of that. Would have been nice to have one for a Scout Titan but I guess weight is uh, the issue for them because they do move very fast and carrying around the ammunition for one of these um, ballistic weapons uh, would just slow them down. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the detail of this weapon. Um, unlike the Quake Cannon, I haven't been able to paint uh, this weapon, but it's uh, high up on my list uh, right there with the uh, Plasma Cannon. Then we will uh, go through some size comparisons with other Warlord Titan weapons and the, uh, the Reaver version of this. And then finally we'll end up with all of the rules for the weapon, which uh, you know has been an absolute nightmare to get hold of. <laughs> because they're not in the book. We'll look at the 40K rules and the Horus Heresy rules. So this is the Gatling Cannon. I haven't glued on the armor plates. Please don't freak out. I don't do, I don't do that for, for these uh, uh, weapons at this stage. I will glue them on once everything is, is complete. Uh, so as you can see, you've got this block here, some big, big tubes. Maybe it's to cool the weapon down. Maybe it's the power cell to, to spin the rotary cuff around. This is the uh, ammunition box. I think I may well be painting this box a different color like I did with the Quake Cannon. Um, I didn't do that on the uh, Reaver Titan, my original Reaver Titan though, so um, that's that's quite odd. Anyway, uh, this is the feed uh, where the uh, shells go into from the, uh, from the box. Um, looks pretty straightforward, uh, very nice. Bear that in mind that if you, you know, you're going to be covering it up though, which absolutely sucks. Um, it looks odd if you don't have these armor plates on as well. Um, I just think that that is, yeah, it's, well, you can't really see it, can you, when the armor plate is on? So that that annoys me a little bit um, because, uh, you know, you, you're getting rid of all that of that detail. You can see the shells being fed into it, um, into these uh, long, into the uh, firing uh, mechanism. But um, the... Barrels themselves are lovely. Um, I had a few issues with the gaps at the bottom. Um, they, you know, you may well get this uh, with uh, this weapon and with the Reaver. Um, you may get a few gaps. This is uh, par for the course with uh, you know so many parts going on. You know, you've got six uh, barrels there with two uh, rotary supports. Um, so that might happen, but you can clean it up. Um, I didn't really have any issues other than they were the only issues I had uh, with this. I've put the uh, magnet, I've magnetized it. I put the magnet sitting proud there before it was too far back, but I've since uh, rectified that. It's nice and strong in there. Uh, I like the flared um, egress style muzzles. I think they are. Um, but anyway, so first thing we'll do is we'll just compare uh, the Macro Gatling Blaster with a Reaver Titan Gatling Blaster. I'll just give you the, <laughs> it's so cute, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so look at the size difference there. It, it's not half the length, but it's, it's definitely two thirds of the length, isn't it? Um, you've got this Imperial, you've got this uh, Imperial, uh, you've got this Imperial Eagle there. Um, but everything is just shrunk down and um, the way it mounts as well uh, is a little bit different you've got the armor panels 
molded onto this piece. But this is the new refreshed version of the uh, Gatling Blaster for the Reva. Slightly different uh, to the uh, older one. It goes together nicer. Uh, you've got proper cutouts there. I had a lot less issues with this than the old school one, the old, uh, then the uh, original. The original was a, a, a absolute pain to put together. Um, but this one, lovely. Um, and uh, this, this and the uh, turbo laser gave me, this and the Reva laser blaster gave me more hope in uh, the rest of the weapons. So I went out and uh, got the uh, melter cannon finally, because I did, because I already have the volcano cannons for the, uh, the Nemesis. Anyway, so that's how it stacks up. Uh, next to uh, a Reva um, Gatling Blaster. We've got the uh, Volcano Cannon right here, which is the longest of all the Warlord Titan weapons. Um, the Gatling Cannon is, is no slouch though, it's still the second longest weapon out of all of them. And finally we have the uh, Quake Cannon right there, which um, yeah is the shortest out of, out of all of them. But uh, the plasma cannon, the Sun Fury plasma cannon is still being built, um, but that is the third longest weapon out of all these uh, four. Um, but uh, that at least gives you an idea there of uh, the size of this Gatling cannon compared to the other offerings. It's the second longest and uh, and I'm guessing that the Wardle Titan will look amazing um, once I get hold of a second one of these, whenever Forge World pull their finger out and uh, release the carapace mounted Gatling blasters. Um, I want a full Dakar Warlord Titan just for the rule of cool. I mean, that thing is gonna look amazing. All right then, the uh, final sort of size comparison I like to make is just with the three usual suspects. Uh, you've got a Space Marine, you've got Sly Marbo and a Primaris. So this is where they stand next to it. You can fit a fair number of Space Marines in that ammo box um, and Sly Marbo is very small compared to it. Uh, and then you've got uh, Primaris, just gives you an idea of how long the barrels are uh, compared to quite a few Primaris Space Marines. And here it is on a Warlord Titan, you know, minus the armor plates there, of course, because I don't trust my white tack at all. It looks pretty decent, although I have magnetized it to uh, work more efficiently on its left arm. If I do get a second one, um, this one, is going to be placed on the left arm and the new one will be placed on the right. This thing looks amazing next to a uh, Sun Fury Plasma. Um, it looks good next to a Quake. It looks incredible next to another Gatling Blaster. But anyway, I could go on and on and on. Let's go through the rules of this uh, macro Gatling Blaster. Well, it's a range 100 inches. It's a heavy 12, strength 9, AP minus 4, damage 4. No abilities. Doesn't have any abilities at all for it which is a little bit disappointing. Super, how does its rules compare to all of the other uh, Warlord Titan rules? Well, firstly, let's just compare it to the Reaver Titans uh, Gatling Blaster, which I previously just showed. It's a little bit longer range by 28 inches. So it has the same number of shots, a better strength at nine instead of eight, and an armor penetration of minus four and a damage of four. So better stats all round, except for the number of shots. It's still got the same number of shots, but everything is better. I really like the fact that it's armor penetration of minus four, and the 100 inch range is nice too, uh, but it means that it does have to get a little bit closer, but it does mean that it has to get closer to its enemy and in the danger zone of other Titans uh, volcano cannons. And I don't just mean the ones on Titans, I mean, um, you know, like the Shadow Sword and uh, Ordinatus uh, weaponry. How does it compare to the other Warlord Titan weapons then? Well, it's almost a third of the range of the Mori Quake cannon, and you need visibility to an enemy to fire it. I like how it has a straight up 12 shots though, rather than uh, random shots of the Volcano cannon, the Sun Fury, and the Quake cannon itself. Um, you know, it's just straight up, no messing, 12 shots, there you go. Its strength is the lowest strength of any of the weapons on the Warlord Titan. With the Apocalypse Missile Launcher notwithstanding, neither the point defense weapons uh, and also the that the Ariok Power Claw is equipped with. But we're comparing a Warlord Titan weapon to a, um, a Warhound uh, weapon there. Its armor penetration is 
all right. You know, armor penetration of minus four is, is good. It's the same as the laser blaster, uh, which is the carapace weapons, and it's the same as the Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator, but it just doesn't quite cut it compared to the Volcano Cannon and Quake Cannon, and I think that's quite fair. It doesn't do much damage at all, you know, only damage of four. However, you are getting 12 shots at damage four. I mean, technically, the Quake Cannon can pump out more shots at a possibility of having 18 as opposed to 12, but still. Uh, that's all by chance, whereas this you're getting a guaranteed 12 shots. Now, I can only imagine uh, the amount of damage output that this Warlord Titan would have. If you had two of these weapons, that's 24 strength 9 shots at AP minus 4 damage 4. But also, if you had m the carapace mounted Reva Gatling blasters with another 12 shots each. So now we're talking, now we're cooking. We've now got 48 shots, 24 of them being damage 3, 24 of them being damage 4. That is a huge amount of DACA. However, to make the most of all of those shots, you're going to need to get your Warlord Titan in even closer, even running full pelt with this thing for two turns, full 12 inches. You're still not going to be able to get in range by using the carapace weapons, the carapace uh, Gatling blasters. And furthermore, you're coming within danger range of uh, Reva Titan's Melter Cannons and Warhound's Vulcan Mega Bolters. I mean, if your Warlord is within 72 inches of a Warhound Titan, it only needs that extra four inches because it can move 20 inches and then the, the range of the me Mega Bolter is 48. So two turns of moving from the Warhound and it's going to be able to make a big dint on your Void Shields um, just with uh, you know, the hail of fire that 20 shots at that range can, can deal. And that goes the same for other Warlord Titans, to be fair. So yes, it's a good weapon with a decent number of reliable shots, but at the same time, we're creeping into that 72 inch range. But for the rule of cool, it looks absolutely amazing. I love it, I really do and having uh, the carapace weapons on the top uh, as well. I mean, maybe it might be best to uh, use the Apocalypse mi Missile Launchers uh, with a pair of them. Okay, I've, I've talked on far too much about uh, 40K rules for the Macro Gatling Blaster. Let's have a little look at the uh, Horus Heresy rules for the weapon. Now, now, this is where things get interesting. In Horus Heresy, it doesn't have that 100 inch range, it only has 72 inch range, so the same range as the Reaver Gatling Blaster. And uh, that's fantastic. And that's a disappointment, but it's fantastic for 40k. The strength, however, is a strength 10. AP3, so the AP3 compared to AP minus 4 for 40k is, is comparable. Um, it's a primary weapon 6, large blast 5 inches, and pinning. So. You're getting six shots with it, there's six barrels, that's fair enough, but each one of those shots is five inch blast uh, marker. You could, I say you could probably have 10 models under one of those markers. That could be 60 models, which kind of makes sense compared to the 40K rules, having the damage of four with a strength of 12. But this large blast rule depends on, depends on your enemy having, uh, you know, five, having six, perfectly placed um, units of 10 uh, for you to just wipe out. Nonetheless, still very, very beefy in Horus Heresy. You know, that strength 10 is not to be overlooked and the AP3 is decent at wiping out Space Marines. And it pins as well. I think six shots is fair in Horus Heresy. Um, and I think the extra strength is um, welcome, but I just wish that it was the same 100 inch range in Horus Heresy. That would, um, that would pump it up. Um, a fair amount and make it uh, much more worthwhile compared to the uh, D strength that other Warlord Titan weapons um, bring to the table. But what do you guys think of the Warlord Titan Macro Gatling Blaster? I think it's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see um, one of these on a, an Emperor class or Warmonger Titan. Um, they've gone for the uh, big plasma weapons for the uh, Warmaster. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of ballistic weapon uh, like uh, the Gatling Blaster on that at some point. Please do put your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section below as always. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. The Emperor Protects.